Hi, my name is Sergio Fernández Balaguer. I am the head of the international department of EMT Madrid, the public transport operator of the city of Madrid in Spain. And uh, in the next slides, I would like to tell you about planning procurement and how to commission electric buses on charging infrastructure. So in the next slides, I will deep into some uh, information about the purchasing procedure, the operational structure, the purchasing evolution we have had at EMT and what to consider in the tendering process with some generic recommendations from UITP. I would like also to get into some details uh, about some considerations and finally uh, to give you some conclusions. EMT Madrid is the public transport operator. It was created in 1947. It's public uh, 100%, so it's fully owned by Madrid City Council. And we provide a service all the year round, every day of the week. So beyond being a bus operator, we are also managing parking facilities, tow trucks, uh, the e-bike sharing system, and the cable car. These are some figures. I will not deep into this because you already know, but just in case you are curious about the number of buses we have, almost reaching 2,100, 84% of our fleet is considered green. That means using alternative fuels, and that for sure includes electric buses. So regarding the deployment of electric bus service and this fleet renewal process, this is uh, our pr procedure regarding the purchasing. So we start from the bid specifications. That, mean, that means, um, uh, you know, defining our own needs, which could be yours as a public transport operator. So identificate uh, the needs you have in terms of the type of service, etc., and then to set the different requirements, both um, from the operational point of view and also about the test criteria. Uh, for, for the buses you are going to purchase. Then, regarding the contract awarding and tender, uh, you need to take into account how to verify the different specifications, both serial um, buses or if they are prototypes. For the manufacturing process monitoring, we always do a factory tour and we set the due date for a control uh, assessment. Then we have the delivery phase, so all units must be validated and checked based on their specifications. And finally, last but not least, we need to go through the acceptance certificate and the warranty, which includes the battery's warranty and some penalties if there is any failure. So which is our operational structure at EMT Madrid? Well, we divide it into three different chapters, let's say, or, 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 or sections. We have the fleet supplier, who could be many of them, actually. Um, they provide the bus and the charging uh, infrastructure. They provide the training and they provide also the maintenance during the warranty period. Then we have the energy supplier, which can be any utility company. They provide the critical infrastructure. That means all the power supply that must be, of course, guaranteed to ensure the charging processes. And then we have the operation and maintenance, which is provided by us as the bus operator. And we take care of the bus and the charger, and we train our workforce based on the training that is already provided by the fleet supplier. And what has been the purchasing evolution? Well, uh, the first steps we carried out in the past, and our first fully electric units were purchased in, in 2007, included vehicle plus charger. That means we, we purchased everything at the same time. So the bus manufacturer provided both. We started with Zebra batteries and there were plug-in chargers. Then uh, with the lithium batteries, we kept on purchasing this way by the bus manufacturer, but it included also AC and DC chargers. Then following the evolution of the products in the market, then we decided, we took the strategic decision to purchase separately the vehicle, so that means the buses and the chargers from different manufacturers, but setting the requirement that the vehicle must be compliant and must be ready to communicate with the chargers on the other way around. And that is uh, what it's been doing so far until the next step, which is 
uh, has been uh, to shift towards the use of contactless, let's say, because it's not, it's, it's actually is contact, uh, but by using non-human interface charging processes, by using inverted pantographs. Um, in this uh, regard, we are purchasing lithium batteries uh, uh, buses. We are purchasing separately the pantograph chargers, and uh, and we are keeping this way. And the, the the final step will be to add, especially for the new bus depots which are under construction, to go through smart charging processes, and also following the same approach. So, what to consider in the tendering process? This is based on, on UITP recommendations. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the main features. Uh, so what for? We want that electric bus in particular. We need to set the buyer and contact persons. We need to, to define the procedure, the timetable of the tender, and the legal requirements and standards, which can be very different from any, any place across the globe. Here in Europe, we are subject with some uh, EU directives, but of course, that is not the same case in Asia or in Africa or in Latin America. Then we have the legal requirements and standards, uh, I'm sorry, that was already mentioned, the list of legal documentation and company information, the tender evaluation criteria, including the life cycle cost. This is very important because you have always, uh, let's say, objective uh, evaluation criteria and that subjective evaluation criteria. So some of them are automatically evaluated, for instance, the price, um, but some others need some assessment such as these technical aspects. Um, the presentation of the tender, the functional and technical specifications, the maintenance documentation, consumables, training, the financial conditions, the vehicle warranty, the vehicle availability and then the charging infrastructure. And I have circled those three because I would like to give some more information on those three. So in which conditions and what for. And this is based on the information you need to include in this summary of your tendering process. You need to take into account what do you need really that bus line, electric bus line for. So thinking about the city conditions, topography can influence a lot. But also if we have zero emission zones, that means that we probably will have to prioritize the setting of an electric bus line in these zero emission zones, the climate, in some European countries, for instance, electric buses do have an internal combustion engine, a small one, for the heating. That's not the case in Madrid, but it's some, something you, you also need to think of. And then the main characteristics of the bus line, uh, the length, the timetable, the speeds, the number of stops, the possible charging time, the number of buses and drivers, etc. Because all that will condition the type of products you will receive and the bidders. And then, I'm in good conditions to use electricity. May I use electricity? And this is this is linked to the charging strategy and the network capacity. You need to take into account many details before launching a procurement for electric vehicles. Actually, buying a, an electric bus is relatively easy. You just need the money, which are quite expensive, by the way, but you can buy it directly. But the most challenging thing is, okay, how I'm going to charge it? And how I'm going to manage all this. So you need to take into account um, the charging capacity for the entire infrastructure, thinking about the, the final number of electric buses you are having, the charging positions and the, the individual capacity, the grid power supply, the substation capacity and the installation if you need one, and the charging rate to be applied at each point, the management, the technology, either charging by night or charging what we call opportunity charging so that could be done on, on the way while it's on service or a combination of both then the bus specifications regarding the battery technology the charging capacity what type of charging infrastructure you are using pantograph pantograph up pantograph down plug-in induction um, the grid availability capacity the grid connection the lifetime system or the amortization of buses which also influence the lifetime of the chargers and actually the acquisition of charging infrastructure and charging infrastructure costs for e-buses are, are, are higher than other types of fuels so, so to mitigate these costs you can also take some measures such as setting longer contract periods 
um, or a low phase introduction of electric buses or a low in extension of the period of use of these electric buses. Something which is also done many times is to extend the amortization period of the buses and the infrastructure, for instance, up to 50 years, or elaborate mandatory procedures in the tender documents for handling over uh, the infrastructure for the next operator. This is very useful when you have a concession. Um, so the same applies um, for um, for other aspects, such as transferring uh, this depreciation for renewable fleet to the next operator, or, or maximizing the, 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 invest, the investment, taking into account ways to increase the bus millage, um, to benefit public transport by benefiting public transport use, or include uh, measures to subsidize green technologies versus combustion engine uh, ones. And training is also very important. Uh, what skills do we need? And that is something we include in our tendering processes. So the bus operator must provide training, especially training for trainers. So including the safety systems uh, because of the high voltage systems, economical drivers, so eco driving, it's, it influences a lot the, the, the range of the battery, the connection of the buses for charging, you need to explain, it's not so intuitive many times, um, how to check that the charging is activated, how to react in the event of any fault or incident, uh, then how to operate and tow, uh, tow buses when they, they fail, or, or just familiarizing drivers uh, with the bus, checking everything and risk and hazards related to propulsion. To propulsion. So just to finalize the conclusions, Electrification must be done in accordance with the characteristics of the bus network. Uh, choosing the optimal model is also based on your local context. Context for us, for EMT, is charging by another bus depot by using inverted pantographs and conductive charging. Few exceptions apply to this model. Then the design and adaptation of the bus depots must guarantee the availability of energy, so this is very fundamental. You need to consider key aspects uh, such as maintenance and workforce skills linked to the training. And this charging of buses must be guaranteed efficiently and reliability and reliably. This, uh, very high electrical power is for, for sure needed, but applying planning charging processes, this can be done, it's feasible. And public-private cooperation between operator, administrations, electricity companies, of course, the bus, the bus uh, manufacturers. So this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to uh, send an email to that email address that uh, appears on the slide. Thank you.